Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Cabinet to approve a multi-million dollar budget for education transformation program. Funeral directors frustrated over lack of regulations to govern industry. And later in sports, reggae boys in battle against Qatar in international friendly. Thank you for joining us. I'm Machine Masters and here are the details. The Cabinet is to review and approve a multi-million dollar budget for the implementation of the Patterson Report for Transformation of the Education Sector. During a press conference this morning, Education Minister Favel Williams did not give a final figure, only that it will be huge and rolled out over a number of years. I am sure by the next time we come back to you, we will be able to give you the specifics of the budget. It's completed. But we have to allow Cabinet to, um, to see it, to discuss it, before we give the specifics of the number. Um, as, as you can tell by the transformation report, um, the budget is going to be uh, significant over a number of years. But in terms of the specifics, we will um, announce what that is after Cabinet has been able to look at it and to inter interrogate it. Meanwhile, Chairman of the Commission, Dr. Adrian Stokes, says while he is not pleased with the pace of the implementation of the report's recommendations, he is confident that more work can be done now. The Ministry has secured a Chief Transformation Officer responsible for driving the implementation and monitoring the progress. There is a need to improve or increase the speed of execution of key initiatives. And I suspect that as the ministry, the ministry uh, strengthens the leadership team and add key resources in key areas, this is something that they will come to, to grips with. Where are the regulations? The question being asked of the government by the Jamaica Association of Certified Embalmers and Funeral Directors. There have been calls for years for the establishment of regulations to govern the industry, but the calls have seemingly fallen on deaf ears, according to the association. The details in this report. Frustration is boiling over in the country's funeral industry. This as regulations to govern the sector are yet to go before Parliament to be reviewed and subsequently passed into law. President of the Jamaica Association of Certified Embalmers and Funeral Directors, Calvin Lynn, says he has received two drafts of the regulations from the Health Ministry. He says the first was done in 2014. It was then amended in 2019 and discussions were held in 2020. But that's where everything seemingly died. The members are asking, and I as leader of the association, asking, calling on the government and the Ministry of Health in particular to tell us when these regulations will be made into law. The association noted, however, that support for the regulations does not mean they are trying to leave out small and emerging funeral homes from earning a livelihood. So what we're trying to do, or what the association is trying to do, is to actually raise the standard of the funeral home industry. We want to have some dignity and some um, recognition as funeral directors, as a profession. Now, for those who are in the, in the industry and are not certified, it's not that the association is closing the door on you, it's that we're actually the opposite. We're asking you to come in, we're asking you to get the necessary requirements, get the necessary training. Here's why. As funeral directors and embalmers, we are, we are dealing with um, chemicals, very dangerous chemicals. We have to know how to mix, how to use, how to utilize the chemicals. We're dealing with, obviously, cadavers, dead human bodies, um, with the potential to spread diseases. There are pathogens that can be spread, airborne, bloodborne. 
A soldier was shot and killed on Millsborough Avenue in Barbican St. Andrew this morning. He has been identified as Major Bonnie Paul Williams. He was also medical doctor and served as Reserve Brigade Medical Officer in the JDF. Now our news center understands that Dr. William w was on his way home when he saw a group of men attempting to steal a motor car. The men opened fire at the soldier's vehicle. He was shot several times and later pronounced dead at hospital. Now according to the police report, his firearm is is also missing. The head of one local manufacturing entity is calling for Jamaicans to come to terms with and embrace the use of artificial intelligence to boost productivity. The call by the Caramed CEO comes as a country launched its first national STEM center. More in this report. With the rampant increase in artificial intelligence, AI renewed concerns, majority of the current jobs could become obsolete within a few years. That's the view of CEO of Caramed, Glenn Christian. He notes that in Jamaica, some major labor tasks are taking much longer than necessary as they are still being done manually. Hence, he's questioning how local manufacturers will stand up to other countries which are already using artificial intelligence for routine tasks. Here in Jamaica, we are still using the same work methods from two decades ago. Heavy reliant on manual labor with limited skills, no value added. And it is essential to recognize that many of these jobs will become obsolete within the next five years as the cost of effectiveness of artificial intelligence continues to rise. It's wise encouraging Jamaicans to get with the government's STEM program. He was speaking at the launch of the National STEM Center at the Micro University College earlier this week. The National STEM Center will coordinate the training of specialized teachers to deliver the STEM curriculum, an initiative which Mr. Christian believes will be beneficial in growing the Jamaican economy. The center will coordinate with teachers colleges across the island to train teachers to deliver a STEM-based curriculum. It will also train specialist teachers for the STEM academics, which are being established by the government. The Michael University College is well placed to lead the charge because this institution has focused for several years on STEM education for the region's teachers. In the meantime, Education Minister Favel Williams says improvements will be coming to the education sector to facilitate the shift. For one, she says teachers' colleges will have to be brought on to the ministry's broadband infrastructure as they will need the requisite technology to carry out their daily tasks. Raquel Porter, TVJ News. The St. Thomas Eastern Taxi Association is calling on the Transport Ministry to address the transport situation in the parish. Scores of students were stranded this morning as only a few taxis were operating on the eastern and western routes. Karen Simpson tells us more. President of the St. Thomas Eastern Taxi Association, Kirk Brown, is appealing to the government to provide more public transportation in the parish. He says because of the limited number of public passenger vehicle PPV operators that ply the routes, dozens of students are stranded on a daily basis. The passengers, especially the children, you know, they're having it difficult to, to get to school and home. On Wednesday, members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, intercepted an overloaded bus carrying students. The Taxi Association president argues that this was as a result of the transportation situation. He acknowledged, however, that some operators do make it difficult for passengers, especially students. A few of them who are supposed to complete their road, they are encouraging those operators to complete their road. Do not use the wire point, go halfway and, and turn back. Because you see the, 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 the work, you know, computer route because, you know, you have um, passengers that need to go further to their um, relevant destination. But the taxi men, they are avoiding the students because they are saying that the money is small. So there are children out there at nights who are vulnerable. And turning to the taxi operators, Mr. Brown is appealing to them to avoid overloading. You know, I understand that you want to make an extra um income but at the same time you know we have to do it in the in the protocol way and in the in the 
in the legal and rightful way. In the meantime, he's reminding passengers, especially students, to take personal responsibility when traveling. Carrie and Simpson for TVJ News. And it's time for a break, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Thousands of teenagers and adolescents in St. Thomas can now access several social, educational, and health services, all in the comfort of one space. The Health Ministry has established another teen hub, the second of its kind in the country. The facility was opened recently. It will offer homework assistance, research facilities, counseling and clinical services, as well as mental health support for teens and adolescents in the parish. During the opening ceremony, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton said that the hub is a response to the distress among young people. That vulnerable segment of our society, our young people, our schoolers, at a place where they congregate, because they have to congregate, they have to take the bus and the taxi to go home, so conveniently located, where they can get some guidance and support. Dr. Tufton says the $60 million facility will add support where there are gaps within schools and the home. For their use, Teen Hub is here to support them and also to support you in your efforts to support them. The Palisado Strip in Kingston was also part of the recent cleanup drive by the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. Now, Executive Director Orly Gordon says special attention was given to that area as it is a gateway to the city for thousands of visitors each year. He says while it is a great spot for recreational activities, the area is often marred by garbage. That's unacceptable. And I stare in the camera and say we can do better. And we should do better. Have your fun. Walk along the strip, you know, enjoy the moment. Those of you who come for fishing, fish, whatever you come to do. But don't leave the garbage behind because this is a beauty spot. This is the gateway to the city. We cannot afford to give the people coming into our city a bad impression of our country. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Significant effort is being made by the World Bank to help small island developing states in restructuring debt. President of the World Bank, Ajay Banga, says this is important as many countries borrowed money at low interest rates, which have now increased significantly. He was responding to the question of what the World Bank is doing to help small island developing states SIDS spur economic growth. The World Bank and the IMF, as part of the G20 Common Framework, are trying to work through how to restructure some of this debt in a way that makes it more palatable and easier for these countries to work their way through. It's not really us who do that. It is the bilateral creditors, but it's also the commercial creditors whom we have to bring to the table to be able to do this. Some early success was in Sri Lanka. We're trying to work our way through a couple of the African countries. There are others that want this help. This is hard work because you have to get creditors to agree to basically take a cost against their lending to enable this to work better in the future. And federal prosecutors could be dropping some charges against the embattled founder of FTX for a time. Sam Bankman-Fried is facing 13 criminal charges for allegedly stealing customer funds from the bankrupt crypto exchange. Originally, he was indicted and extradited from the Bahamas on eight charges. The U.S. then added five additional charges, including allegations that Bankman-Fried sought to bribe Chinese government officials. Earlier this week, a Bahamas Thomas Court said Bankman Freed could challenge those charges because they weren't part of the initial extradition agreement. And that's it for the Business Minute. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Cuba's Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez contends that the claims made by the U.S. Secretary of State regarding the existence of a Chinese spy base in Cuba are untrue. He suggests that the accusations are being used as a jurisdiction for the U.S. to continue the economic blockade against Cuba and the maximum pressure measures that have strengthened it in recent years. Cuba insists the China spy base claim is part of a new misinformation campaign by the U.S. 
on the international scene, an investigation by a legislative committee revealed that former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson intentionally misled legislators about violations of his own COVID-19 lockdown guidelines. The findings amount to a historic indictment of a previous Prime Minister who, after leading a landslide election, saw his political career crash. The report found that some of Johnson's denials and explanations were deliberate attempts to mislead the committee and the House. And nine women who accused Bill Cosby of sexual abuse in the past filed a new lawsuit Wednesday asking for a jury trial against the comedian. The plaintiffs allege they were either given pills or tainted drinks by Cosby during encounters in Nevada and were sexually assaulted while drugged. The lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court of Nevada says the encounters happened during the period 1979 to 1992. The new suit comes just weeks after a new law took effect in Nevada, eliminating the statute of limitations for most sexual assault cases. Cosby is also facing lawsuits in other states that have recently passed similar look-back laws, including New York and California. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Kerry and Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. Karen Madden is standing by.